Worst marathon ever. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of That Gets My Goat's Worst Marathon Ever. Is this the last episode? I suppose so. The final episode. It's the final chapter. The series finale of The Worst Marathon Ever. That's right. Yeah, we're uh, we're going back to the well one more time for a little question and answer session. We got a few more questions left here from our listeners, and we're going to go through them and see if we can answer truthfully, That's or right. if we'll have to make crap up completely. <laughs> I forgot I wanted to do the words you never want to hear again, too. But shoot. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get that. That'll just have to be a regular episode of, of That Gets My Goat that's not part of the worst marathon ever. That's going to be a great episode, actually. <laughs> it's not going to be terrible like these. All right. <laughs> so we're going to jump right in with both feet and go to the first question. Besides Spider-Man, Ooh. Batman, Superman, or any of the X-Men... Who is your favorite superhero? That still leaves some pretty heavy hitters. That leaves Iron Man. That leaves Captain America. That leaves Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Flash. Taking out any of the X-Men, though, that takes out a large portion of... Or is it just X-Men, not X-Men, like, supporting cast? You know what I mean? Just members of the team. Well, what, what supporting cast would you be referring to that's not a member of the team? Well, I, I guess everybody was a member of the team at some time. But, you know, there's... I guess they maybe they're villains. I don't know. For example, Quicksilver, who was an X-Men, but he was also a Avenger. Yeah, that's Or a good point. Scarlet Witch, but they count as X-Men, right? I wouldn't count him as X-Men. Well, Fox <laughs> has the rights to him, so I guess yeah. they count, technically. Legally, they t- count as X-Men. You can't use Deadpool or somebody like that, despite them not being... An X-Man. Okay, but surely there's a character that you like that's not an X-Man that Oh yeah. That you can say is Yeah, I'll have to think about it for a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna toss to you while I try and decide. Okay. Well it's interesting that they omitted those characters because those are my favorites. The ones that I can't use. I think they probably knew that, so they wanted you to say something different than you always say. Okay. God. Um as a child Besides Spider-Man, I would have picked the Incredible Hulk. Uh, I love just the idea of of the strength and the rage and the... Because you feel helpless as a child. And, you know, I was a weakling, still am. And the idea that you could become, you know, this great, powerful giant was really appealing to me. But as I've gotten older, I think I would say it's Captain America. And I don't even really know why, because he was not part of my childhood. He wasn't in any Marvel comics that I read that I can even think of. Of The first Captain America story that I ever read was in the X-Men, and it flashed back to when Wolverine was whoever he was in World War II, before he became the Wolverine, and, and encountering Captain America during World War II. And I just loved that story and thought, oh, that is so neat. Because Wolverine had lost his memory after that, you know, so he had no memory of ever having met Cap. And as I became more interested in World War II, I became more interested in Captain America and, the you know, the idea of what if he had actually existed. And that character was created in 1941 specifically, right, for a reason, (laughs) because, you know, there was all this problem in Europe and, 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 and war seemed imminent and suddenly, you know, your nation became important and, and to create a character who fought for America and had the, the red, white and blue on his shield and in his uniform and all that stuff, he wasn't just a superhero. He was a, a symbol. And that sort of thing is so interesting to me. Then also the whole time travel thing, which came later, not time travel, but man out of time thing i just love i love the idea of a man from an easy not easier simpler time from the greatest generation as they say you know people who are willing to lay down their lives for strangers being in this time when everything is selfish and everything is easy everything's at the push of a button or the you know right there at the tip of your fingers 
and that the, the idea of a clash of of what a hero is considered today and a hero back then and you know hopefully that they will tackle that in the future avengers and captain america movies but any little bit with the fish out of water that they can do i just i really really respond to but i love the idea that he has old-fashioned morality that he's a the kind of hero they don't make anymore because the world is too dirty too gray that's why captain america would be my pick for the answer there that's interesting because my pick is really similar i picked captain britain <laughs> no <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, it, it kind of. Blew. I was. I was glad you were talking about the Hulk because I was going to say I think I would pick Captain America too. <sighs> That's kind of a bummer. I'm going well, no, to I'm gonna change my answer tell me now. I, I, when I, you first Captain Britain. Tell me when you first were introduced to Captain America and why you respond to him. Well, shoot, when I was first, I, I remember there was actually a. I want to say it was a TV show. Did they do like a very very short lived TV show of Captain America or maybe a film? They, I think they did two TV movies. Okay, maybe it was the TV movies. I remember when I was a very, very young child seeing a TV, a teleplay <laughs> about Captain America. And I remember he rode a motorcycle on it. And of course he had a shield. And uh, we saw this while I was on vacation at someone else. And we were at somebody else's house. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, it, it, it was really cool, and I liked it a lot, and I would say I was five, six, seven years old, probably, very young kid, and I, you know, only vaguely, vaguely remember it at all. And then, yeah, pretty much didn't see him again for I don't know how long. Uh, there was no Captain America cartoon. There was Justice League cartoons, and I saw plenty of those, but he was not part of that. He was part of the Avengers, which is a different company. But yeah, I really like that kind of a guy. He's like, and, and Superman falls in that same category. He's the guy that has that, you know, the old fashioned morality, like you're saying. He's the boy scout, as the old saying goes, you know, that person that will choose the right thing always. And people are like, oh, it's this guy, I don't like him because he's such a boy scout. Which is just, it just doesn't work anymore, kind of a thing, you know, people will complain about. But it's cool to have that kind of a character to go along with the rest of the group, you know what I mean? And I like Captain America's dynamic with Iron Man, who's, you know, totally self centered and he's a drunk and he's a, you know, out of control half the time. And then there's Captain America, who's somehow like his best friend and, you know, his, his main ally and, you know, these guys together make the avengers work that's cool when it comes down to it yeah i don't know a lot about very many of the characters that aren't the ones that were on the list that we weren't allowed to talk about so you know i mean i green lantern cool i don't know i don't really know green lantern very well within only like the last few years did i ever learn that his ring is powered by willpower kind of a thing and even how that works and why that's cool i don't know Wonder Woman, I've, I've always thought was pretty cool, but I don't know anything really about her. I've never, I, I used to like the Wonder Woman show with freaking uh, Linda Carter in it, because Linda Carter's freaking gorgeous. She's probably one of the first women I remember ever being attracted to as a young man. It was right about the right time when I was just getting old enough to realize, hey, I like girls, especially Wonder Woman. But yeah, again, I didn't even know that, like, her boyfriend was named Steve Trevor until a few years ago. I guess maybe when the, the movie came out or something like that. You know, very little knowledge of her Have you story. ever read a comic book with Wonder Woman in it? I've read some with it, yeah, but they're like Justice League comic books or, or something like that where it has Wonder Woman in it, but she's not the character. She's always just one of the characters. Um... It might be interesting to actually pick that up and try and learn more about it. Uh, and some of the others, too. You know, Flash. I don't know. He runs fast. But and I've seen stories where they try and make that interesting. But, uh, yeah, I don't always uh, find it to be all that neat. Well, with these characters that are 75 years old or 50 years old or even 30 years old, somebody somewhere has to have done something neat with them. I True. mean, with the exception of Spawn... 
for them to have, have sustained and had so many fans. Spawn, I don't know if anybody has ever done anything neat with Spawn. He's just well designed. He looks cool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe that's not fair. Maybe there have been awesome Spawn stories, and I don't know what I'm talking about. My favorite superhero on the not on that list is Kick Ass. <laughs> It would be cool even to know some of the other companies, like Image or whatever, you know, to know Spawn, to know... Which, was it, is it Witchblade? Mm-hmm. Justice. Some of those characters. I just I don't know very many of them. There's only so much time in the day, unfortunately. The more time I spend reading comic books, the less I do on the Dune Steve and Ride and etc. So right now I do none of those things, which is... Uh, Interesting, too. Okay. <laughs> Let's go on to the next question. Number 17. Do you buy into the arguments that Stan Lee shouldn't get the credit for creating all the Marvel characters? I'm guessing from... La that was last episode when you talked... Or, or last question and answer episode, I should say. Mm. When you talked about Stan Lee a little bit. I'm guessing you don't buy into that. <laughs> no, hell no, I don't. It's funny, though, when... Because people make really strong arguments about the artist in a comic book deserving, you know, a, a great deal of the credit. And I can understand that because comics are a visual art form. But because I'm a writer, I'm always going to side with the writer. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm always going to side with the guy who says... What if there's a man who can crawl on walls and he has the power of a spider and he can make webs? And then, I guess Jack Kirby draws that character, or, I mean, Steve Ditko does the, the, the drawing and stands like, there he is, the Spider-Man, you know, kind of thing. I, and, I, and somebody could say, no, Ditko drew it. Ditko is the creator of that thing. In my mind, the guy who thought it up, who gave it a voice, uh, who gave it a name and a backstory and came up with the powers, that's the guy who created it. And, you know, it's fair to say that Jack Kirby co-created the Fantastic Four or the X-Men or that Steve Ditko co-created Doctor Strange or Spider-Man. But to take away from the guy who... I mean, Stanley made the Marvel Universe what it is. All of the characters that anybody has affection for, he was the reason that you care about these characters. You know, the, the, the painful backstory that Spider-Man has that, that makes you love Spider-Man. Or his, his, his voice, his, his smart aleckness, or, you know, his guilt, or, the, the supporting cast and J. Jonah Jameson, you know, railing on, on the menace that is Spider-Man and all that. I, that's all words. That's all writing. That's how I feel on that. I mean, just like when people say that uh, Bob Kane didn't create Batman. Here, here. The guy did not create Batman. Bill Finger created Batman. Bob Kane was smart enough to say, I want my name on that. And, you know, died a very, very rich man, whereas Bill Finger died penniless. The guy who wrote it, the guy who created those characters, who said, okay, the Joker fell into a vat and he's got this, you know, grin, this permanent grin, and Two-Face, you know, got burned on one side of his face and, and all that, and, and, and that's how he's, and he, he has a coin and it's scratched. That's the guy who created that. But, you know, that's just me, and, and if somebody is an artist, they probably would side with the artist and say no you know how many drawings of spider-man ditko probably went through before he came up with what we know from amazing fantasy 15 that guy created it that's what i think you you let me know what you think well i i agree with you and i haven't listened to a lot of the arguments to to know what they're trying to say but uh yeah I, I, and i can go with you too where you can say yeah they co-created it because i'm sure stan lee did not i may, maybe he said oh well, let's say he's colorful uh whatever he's gonna you know i, I don't want to spite on his back and on the front big eyes i don't know what uh you know how much involvement he might have had with the design of the character 
But yeah, you can say that they co-created it. I'm I'm totally fine with saying that because uh, yeah, there's you know the look of a character is important as well. Um, you know, you can come up with a really good story for somebody, but then you make them weird looking or go, just goofy or wrong or something like that, and he won't catch on, I guess. But yeah, I, I I definitely would have to agree with you that yeah, no, San, Stan Lee and I'm on the same side. I mean, we're both want to be writers, so. We both uh, think highly of ourselves, and uh, therefore other people that do similar things that we want to do. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm uh, right right there with you. Okay, if you could live anywhere outside of the United States, where would it be? You tackle this one first. Okay, well I'll start with it. That's an interesting question. There's a lot of factors, I guess, when it comes down to that. Where do you want to live? Do you want to live somewhere that's, you know, like a paradise kind of a place? Like, do you want to live in, you know, some beachfront kind of place? Do you want to live in in Thailand right on the beach or, uh, you know, one of those kind of places, that, Fiji or something like that? Is that what you want? Do you want to live somewhere that's similar to the United States, like, you know, a first world country? that speaks English, you know, you want to live in Britain or Australia or somewhere like that, or do you want to live somewhere that's totally new and different? I don't know. It's, it's hard to decide. I've, I've talked with my wife about that because, you know, she could transfer around the world where she works, and I'd be happy to do that if I could ever get myself so that I was a author and I was paid enough that I just did being an author as my job and was able to give up having a a job where then it wouldn't matter. You can live anywhere as an author. You don't have to live in a certain place because you don't have to go to work where you, wherever you are is work. Gosh, wouldn't that suck? You could never get away from work. You could never go home. (laughs) Uh, No, I'm just kidding. But as a Um, writer, I never get away from that anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that would be really cool to be able to just go anywhere. And I've, I've tried to convince my wife that yeah, maybe we should consider, you know, A, I, I would like my kids to have the opportunity to see elsewhere. Because I think that that's something that everyone should do. Everyone should have, everyone should be forced to live elsewhere than where they grew up for a couple of years just so that you realize that the world is a big place and not everything is exactly the same as what you think it is. And maybe the world is, you know, a a lot bigger than you originally thought. And I would like my kids to get that opportunity. And uh, the younger, the better, too, because if you go somewhere where you got to learn a new language, uh, you know, earlier you do it, the better off you are at picking it up. Um when you're older, some of those, and I've heard this somewhere, you know, you, you, you are born with like all the sounds that somebody can make, but when you don't make them, you know, you steadily, you steadily just kind of lose them. And then, uh, at a certain point, it's not so easy to try and pull off sounds that aren't part of English, but are part of whatever this other language is that you're trying to learn. Ah, uh, but shoot, I don't know. I, I've, I've talked with my wife about that, and I was like, what if we just went somewhere, you know? I mean, the easiest place outside of the country would be, you know, like Australia or, you know, Britain, somewhere where all you've got to do is learn customs. You don't have to learn language, at least, except for some of the crazy things, like when they say boot, when they really mean trunk. <laughs> you know, some of that kind of... When they say biscuits, but right. they mean cookies. Right, right. When they say Wankel Rotary Engine. What do they mean? They really mean GTO 5.0 liter. No, I have no idea. I'm sorry. But yeah, that would be really cool. Because then, you know, you get that other culture without too much struggle. So I think that would probably be my first choice now. I did live outside of the United States for a couple of years in South America. And I really enjoyed that. That's one of those idyllic places that you can go to you know the the paradise type place where you can just sit there sand dunes that go right down into the water and the beach and it's just a a nice laid back kind of an environment where it's not hurry hurry go go do you know 
like it is in most first world places, you know, it, being able to just pull out a hammock and, you know, everybody's got a hammock hanging there on their porch and, you know, people take a nap in the afternoon in their hammock after having eaten a nice uh, large noon meal instead of eating uh, the large dinner, which makes people fat. Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. There, There's a lot to be said to that, and I would love to go back there as well. But, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, I guess, what I would say. Probably Britain or Australia would be my first choice. I know somebody who recently went to Australia, and they didn't like it at all. I'm not sure what the deal was, why they didn't like it. Too many Australians would be my it guess. It might have been. They were. I, I know they were definitely scared of the spiders. Apparently Australia is just frigging teeming with the most poisonous spiders imaginable. So they were, they were freaked out by that. I doubt that they ever even saw one, but maybe they did. I don't know. But it's funny, too, because they went and they did that for like, I mean, they were planning on being there for years. They came back in like six months, three months. It was such a short time. And since they've been back, they just talk about it endlessly. Oh, yeah, and this was so cool, and that was so cool. It's one of those, Why did they come back? I don't know. It's one of those kind of things where, like, you can't enjoy them when you're in it, but then you look back on it, and you're like, oh, yeah, and I loved this, and I'd go back any time. i get the chance kind of a thing. I don't know what the deal is with that. Where would you live if you uh, could live anywhere? Uh, I would probably be England. I've always been drawn to the accent. It's such an attractive accent to me. Yes, the, the language barrier is, isn't necessarily a problem. Um, in the back of my mind, I've got this crazy fallacy that they would think that my accent was attractive and, you know, it's <laughs> like, and, and that, you know, I would hit it off with the, the ladies. Which I know isn't true, but it's... No, uh, it, it would be the same thing as uh, somebody going up, coming up to you and say, Hey, how's it going, don't you know? Oh, it's pretty good, you betcha. Yeah. Does that does that attract you? So, see, basically put yourself in that person's place. <laughs> That's you in Britain. But I like their culture, I like their entertainment. I I, I don't know, We I, I had a friend that was British, and, and I always feel threatened by that accent too because they just sound so smart it's it just it seems like a, I would like to visit it at the very least before I die uh, but if I had to live somewhere else I think that's where I would go see um, what people don't understand or maybe they do is is the United States of America is so huge that you can go someplace where it's cold all the time you can go someplace where it never gets cold and you can go someplace where it's dry and you can go someplace where it's swamp and you can go someplace where there's mountains and you can go places where there's it's flat and it's almost like we have the entire world here because it's such a big country and uh, yeah it's not like uh, the Star Wars universe where each planet is all desert or all all forest or whatever we have all the worlds of the of the Star Wars uh, universe all in in our little borders, <laughs> and but and I guess that's me sort of dismissing the the question. I but yeah, I I would like to live there, even just for a little while, just to see what it's like. I mean, I, there's the image, and it's an international image of the ugly American, and the ah, oh, why can't you do things the way we do it here? You know. Which is, it's unattractive and it's petty. But, you know, I've found from immigrants that come here that they do the same thing. Yeah. You know, they, they're they just assholes about it more. Um, wait. Oh, bleep, bleep that. I, I wouldn't want to be that guy. I would want to be the guy who says, this is, wow, this, really, you do that here. That is neat. That is cool. But I probably wouldn't. I would be like, you don't have French, you don't have ketchup? Obviously, you don't want French fries because, you know, they're chips, but, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. I, I, I think that I would be that, and I, I, I don't want to be the ugly American, but it's just... Yeah, you want to be the person that tries everything at the very least. Maybe you can judge from there. I See, I I would... I was born a rambling man, which is funny because that's not... I, I guess that's probably not true. When I, when I grew up, my entire childhood was spent in the exact same house. I never moved anywhere. I was born, brought home to the same house from the hospital that I graduated high school and came home to. 
and so on. Until I went off to college, I'd never lived anywhere else in my entire life. Um, but I always wanted to. I always wanted to experience more of the world and get out and do more things like that. And uh, see, I one of the things that I thought would be cool about being in news is that people that work in news, generally when they go from job to job, they also go from city to city because there's only so many news organizations per city that there's not a lot of choice if you're going to stay in one place it's hard to get a job you know that's different than the one you've already got and i started out in sacramento in the news and then we got a job elsewhere and i went there and i figured okay every three or four years or something like that it'll be cool we'll move to a new town and we'll experience more of the united states and we didn't instead we stayed here and we've been here forever and you just said you're going to live in this house forever. It's likely that we will. Um, and that, I, fortunately, that, that was my wife's a... idea. Oh. oh, okay. All right. She is more of a stay put, I guess. She doesn't like the idea. And she doesn't want our kids to have to move again and again, lose their friends and be sad and whatever comes with that, which I don't, I don't know if that means anything or not. If you ask me, it's going to happen anyways. Because, I mean, when you think about it, when you were in 6th grade, who was your best friend? And when you were in 7th grade and 8th grade and ninth grade, is it the same person? Not very often is it. You know, you cycle through friends and you're good friends with somebody for a while, but then you're not later. You know, it happens anyways, you know. But kids at a certain age, they think that that's, you know, their friends are the most important thing and they could never leave them and they'll cry so much. So, yeah, we're uh, unlikely to go anywhere anymore, unfortunately, and... And we just had a baby, so that kid's going to have friends that he loves so much that he can't leave even 15 years from now. We're going to be uh, unable to go elsewhere. Does that have to be that f***ing loud? The weird thing is, oh, there's where they are. I couldn't even see where the heck they are. Maybe we should roll up the windows. Okay. It's, uh, it's interesting, that whole thing, but I always wanted to do a lot of moving, and I always expected to be able to go and... So like you were saying, the United States is big. There's a lot of just different cultures just here within our own borders that it would be neat to be able to experience. Where we live is one way, but, you know, you go down south and it's a totally different way. And you go up to the northeast and it's another totally different way. And you go just to a big city like New York and it's one way. And, you know, you go to a, a smaller town and it's a different way. And it would be neat to be able to experience more of that. And uh, I guess that may not be in the cards for me. We'll see. We'll see what happens down the line. Who knows? Maybe we work something out. Well, you didn't mention Canada. Is there a reason? But you're going to Canada this week, and your wife is from Canada. But was there never any thought of, well, maybe we'll just go up there for a while? There was a time where we actually were looking into that whole thing the problem is that i'm not a canadian so getting a job in canada is more difficult than uh, it would be for someone else um i'd have to i don't have any kind of citizenship or anything you know i'd have to go through that whole process which is a pain in the butt i mean it's a pain in the butt anywhere it's a pain in the butt in the united states to get citizenship and it's just as much uh in canada and, and all that so it takes a lot of work and, yeah, we, there was a time where we were planning on moving to Edmonton. But also in Canada, they have even less TV jobs. Mm. There's less, you know, that you, you they get all the stations from America and they watch a lot of those. And, you know, each town doesn't even have three or four news channels. It has less. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it makes it even more difficult. And when generally they will hire a Canadian before they'll hire an American, it makes it even tougher to get a job but yeah i mean i would love to see more of canada too i've seen one small portion of it and it would be neat to go to vancouver it would be neat to go to saskatoon saskatoon which i think would probably actually be really similar to what i already have experienced but uh, it would be <laughs> it would be neat to go to regina <laughs> Yes, it would. It would be neat to go to Toronto and Montreal and, you know, some of those other places that are that are there. But, uh, yeah, I would love to go all over the place. 
Okay, we're gonna we got a couple more left. Uh, what is your least favorite word? Oh, well, that's that's really similar to the topic that I wanted to do for a future episode, which is words that you want to go away. Yeah. Do you have a least favorite word at the top that that you without having to think about it? I don't think so. So should we just postpone it for that or I mean yeah, I have a least I have a couple of least favorite words, but are they actual words or are they slang? No, they're they're actual words. Okay. What makes a word your least favorite? Well, is it the way people use it? Is it the ugliness of the sound of it? Like <laughs> like Mendler? I know you've been <laughs> we've been talking about Bridget Mendler recently, and you hate the sound of the name Mendler. I don't know why I do. It just it's such an ugly word to me, and she's not an ugly person. Mendler. I I I I don't know. There are a couple of words I really dislike, but it's because of the context of where I first heard them or what they remind me of. But yeah, there are there are ugly words. I'm trying to remember. You used to have a problem with the word compelling. <laughs> You'd say, oh, geez, don't say compelling. Don't say the story was compelling. But I, that comes from news because that's a catch-all. That's yeah, a it's a word that they use to say interesting. Um, but compelling, I th- it actually means something and it's not what they're saying. You know what I mean? And they say, well, that's a really compelling story. Compelling, compel means to, like, force you to go somewhere or do something. And so if a story is compelling, it should inspire you, incite you to action. It should do something like that. It's not just, wow, I, I'm interested. I want to hear more. I don't but know. But they use it as just awesome. Right. Neat, attractive. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those kind of things where it's like, oh, this is a really compelling story. That does kind of bug me when people use words the wrong way, and it's caught on. You know what? Uh, well, we'll save those for the other episode, though. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to blow our wad here. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, just let me use the word "sick." <laughs> I friggin' hate when somebody says "sick" as in cool. I can live with somebody that you that, like they did in the '80s that said "bad" as in good. But sick bothers me so, so, so much just because it's such a ridiculously negative word and to turn it around to say that it's good. And yet this, those same people will still use I feel sick or that movie was the violence was sick. You know, I, 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 I just I hate sick meaning cool. Oh, that <laughs> bugs me. It, it, it's. And, and pardon me if you're listening and you're an educated person and you use sick to mean cool. But to me, it's the dumbest, lowest, least educated people that say sick. Oh, I've got some... When we get around to our episode that's actually about this, there's some slang that... Uh, there's somebody that started using it at work and I'm just like, oh, every time she says that, I'm just like, okay, please don't. Don't say that. It makes you sound so much dumber than you actually are. Please, seriously, you're not dumb. Don't make yourself look dumb. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We're going to go on to the next question. Okay, we, we don't and have much The next much question, time. it turns out, is the last question. So since we don't have much time, that's perfect. Because okay. we're out of time. The question is, when you first met Big slash Rish, which I guess, you know, depending on who's <laughs> hearing this question. Okay. Did you have any idea you would be friends this long and or be doing a podcast together? That's first an easy of all, question to answer. First of all, no, we had no idea we would be doing a podcast together because there was no such thing when we first met. That was uh, an idea that hadn't come to pass. I mean, what, it was 96, 97 when we started going to school together? I'd say 97 when I first went to that school and met you. But So, that was a long time ago. Um, did we have the idea that we'd be friends for this long, though? I thought that that was pretty possible. I do remember when we were still in college, we kind of came up with this You, Me, Ian who was a, a third friend of ours that we mention every now and then on this show. We kind of came up with a pact. And it wasn't a pact where we really, like, you know, 
cut our hands and marked it with blood. We should have, but we didn't. The pact was that if one of us made it in the film business, then we had to help out the others, pull the others of us up with the one that did make it. It was noble and naive, but it was, I, I do remember that. And we said it on more than one occasion. We were just so gung ho and all day people would tell us, you know, most of you aren't going to make it. This is a hard, this is an unforgiving business. Maybe no one in this room will make it. So run. Don't do this. Don't, Don't pursue walk. this. Run. Yeah. We heard that all the time. And that, and that's what we kind of came up with is it's likely that none of us will make it. And if any of us make it, you know, it's likely that the other two will not. And so wherever we land, we need to make sure to pull the others along with us. Uh, whoever does make it, you don't make a pact like that unless you figure you'll still be friends for years and years. And it's funny because I was a much better friend with Ian than I was with you at the time. I'd grown up with, well, I hadn't grown up with Ian. because You I, went to high school. But I did go to high school with Ian. You know, I hadn't met him before high school. But in high school, we met and we were friends through high school and we were roommates in college. And yeah, we were really good friends. So I assumed that that would carry on. Strangely, I haven't seen Ian in years, years. I can't even remember the last time. And I think the last time I did see Ian was when we were, I was still living in Sacramento and you were living in LA with Ian at the same, he was also living in LA. And Ian came up to Sacramento to visit his family who still lived there. And he brought you along with him and he came by where I worked and he dropped you off and left to do whatever the heck it was he was doing with his family. And I, that was the last time I pretty much saw the guy, was not seeing him at all. It was him being in town and just dropping you off and saying, here, can you mind Rish for me for a while? I got to go do something. Uh, yeah, it was, it was basically that. That was the last time I've seen him. So strangely, the friendship that really stuck that really lasted was the friendship with you, which wouldn't be what I have, would have expected. I would have assumed that uh, Ian and I would have, you know, been blood brothers till the end. We, we didn't do the blood thing was the problem, I guess. But yeah, I guess we did assume that at least that we would be friends in the future. See, that's a good memory that you brought up. I, I, had, I hadn't thought of that in so long. Ian has a much more outgoing person, not outgoing, but he's got, shoot, what's the positive way of saying he's sycophantic personality? <laughs> he's, he's, he is so socially adept mm -hmm. and he's able to feign interest when he's not interested and he's able to listen and nod and smile and say exactly the right thing. And that's a big deal in Los Angeles. And I, I never really mastered it. If I didn't like somebody, I would, I would never see any sense in pretending that I did. I mean, I wouldn't be like, oh, that guy's an asshole. But the personality that you have to have is a go-getter kind of personality. And a, I'm going to make it about me kind of guy. And of course, I do that all the time on the, the podcast, but it's our podcast. And Ian has been quite successful, I think. I mean, he's not where he wants to be, but he's still there making an obscene amount of money and uh oh you know what i don't think he makes the obscene amount that he did when he worked for the great satan he sort of took a what do you call it a cut and pay for more to be able to do what he wanted to do but he's still there and he's he you know he'll sometimes let me know a famous person that he lunch with or that he you know he he saw and uh, and i respond to that because i'm a star effer <laughs> and someday, you know, he he may actually make it. I, 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 it's not just talent; it's perseverance and it's luck, and it's that thing that they, you know, the schmooziness, the the ability to get in with the right people to to make yourself recognized and noticed, and 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 have somebody think of you. And he may make it. I don't know. 
Yeah, uh, maybe, he has other friends now. Yeah. And I'm maybe sure someday he, would... he will get to the point where he figures, okay, I've made it. Now it's time to uh, get rich and big and bring him in uh, as well. That would be, be nice. like, I am in a position where I can now do this. I have a feeling that that's never going to happen. No. And I, if I it did happen, so. I have a feeling that he's not going to think, oh, yeah, I remember the pact that we made when we were in college. No, and you tend to think of the people that you're around all the time. Right. And he has other people that he mentors. And, and at first it really bothered me and it made me so jealous because, like, I'm his friend. I'm the writer that he should go to first for, for projects and that. But I'm not living there anymore. I don't... I'm not in the middle of that. I think for most people, the the mentality in Los Angeles is that's the center of the universe. And if you're not there then you're not interested, then you're not important, then you don't want to be in the business. And it's just, it's, it's a, a, a cruel, unforgiving mistress, this Los Angeles. And, you know, for the people that stuck it out, you know, maybe success will come, but more often than not, they turn their tail and they slink back, sadly, to some other place. And I think about going back, I, I was quite serious about going back just a couple of years ago. And I, was in contact with Ian all the time. And he's like, when, when are you going to come back? You know, oh, the fun we'll have kind of thing. And then I ended up becoming like your wife, pregnant as hell. hell. No, <laughs> I, I became content with where I was or sedentary or I was just like, you know, my sister started having kids and I started to make them a part of my life and they became important. Yeah, I don't know now if I'll ever go back. Anyway, that wasn't what the question was about. Shoot. It was about, did we know we were going to be friends? And yeah, I think I probably took a while. I mean, the thing that made me want to be your friend was the Star Wars angle. That, that you and I started talking about Star Wars one day, or we both had the similar interest, and I realized that we were the same. And for me, growing up, that was such a huge deal, and that was the decider in elementary school of who would be my friend and who wouldn't I be the kids that I became friends with were because we all loved Star Wars and for some reason I still have a ton of affection in my heart for that of, of you know if somebody that loves that franchise there they are my brother and so that yeah also to find out that you wanted to write I know we've talked about this before not everybody wanted to write and that was a big deal as far as podcasts go I if this had existed in college, you and I would have done this. Yeah, I think so. We both had interests in it, and you know, we wanted to do film to tell stories. That was the way that we did it. There was, you know, with, with video or, or sixteen millimeter, and I'm sure we would have done a lot more audio stuff if that had been in existence back then. But the, the, to be honest, when I was, uh, you know, twenty something. It was hard to imagine the future that, that that long. It still is. It's hard to imagine me 20 years in the future or whatever. You know, where will I be? How will I feel? Feel? What will the coffin be like? Interestingly enough, look at that car over there. There's a hearse parked right There's there. There's a hearse parked right across the parking lot from us. Is that weird? I, I saw that a while ago and I just thought, what? No, they've got a bumper sticker that says room for one more. That's beautiful, man. You can really, uh, sweet. So there, there's that. I don't know that I thought that we would be friends forever or whatever, because to be honest, we became much better friends once we were apart than when we were together. And partly it was because you invested the time in, in writing these massive emails. <laughs> and I responded to that because nobody does that. No, I mean, especially now in the 21st century with texts and, and all that stuff. When you can Twitter, uh, you know, and Instagram, and and uh, Skype. I think why Instagram would... is just for sending photos of your junk to people, though. Okay, but that's a way to keep in touch. <laughs> um, if you know what I mean. But it's just that you were willing to respond instead of just yeah, doing all right. You were willing to go into what was good and what was bad and what you had been experiencing and all that stuff. And I was I responded in kind. It was just like wow, how cool uh, it was almost like a pen pal kind of thing yeah uh, to me that cemented the friendship 
then when you moved out here, I think we actually started to talk on the phone. I, I can't remember though. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember exactly either. I think I did have like a one eight hundred number or something like that 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 you could call and talk to me for absolutely free. But yeah, I think we did do that a little bit. But yeah, that is interesting. The the that whole thing. I remember trying to do that with Ian too after we'd done it for a while, and I finally thought, okay, I'm gonna do try and do the same thing so that me and Ian don't continue to drift apart. And I tried it, and yeah, it was yeah, I'm doing fine. Thanks the end kind of a thing and it totally did not work so i guess it takes a certain person maybe it takes a writer or a wannabe writer to be able to do that i don't know and i still have all those emails saved somewhere i used to i used to save all basically all my email that wasn't like spam <laughs> anything that uh somebody sent me that had anything of interest and i thought you know someday these will be really cool to go back and read like years down the line when you've and i tried to put them in order and all that kind of stuff and i think i lost a lot of them at one point although they may still be on my computer somewhere i don't know but i still have them and still cherish them i guess Aww. um i'm sure someday i'll bust them out and read them again for the heck of it standing in front of my grave. Yep, that's what I'll do. I'll sit down next to him and be like, do you remember when we watched Roy? It would be like, the, you know, the scene from like the bad kids movie. Because there's always like, the, 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 the kid has always got a dead parent for some reason. I don't know what that's all about. Cheaper? I don't know. Orphan. Always an orphan. Uh, well, I think that brings us to the end. What do you think? I think this is the end. This is the end, my friend. The end. So, I don't know how many episodes this has been, but I hope that people enjoyed it. I hope people like hanging out with us, or you know, imagining that you're hanging out with us, that you're part of the conversation, and uh, if you responded to it, let us know, because, you know, left to our own devices, we might not do this again. In the end, uh, th in these episodes at least, they kind of were part of the conversation because these questions were submitted by the listeners, so there's that. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. We have forums. As you know, not a lot goes on in the forums, but uh, you're welcome to participate in that. And uh, if you want to ask us more questions, we'll probably do this again. I, I enjoy it. I think it's fun. Well... Thanks for uh, sitting down with me for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, thanks for being a part of this worst marathon ever. Oh, I was thanking you, not them, but uh -oh. okay. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully uh, I don't regret it. It's late now. I, uh, I was hoping to get home. I got up really early this morning. I'm about I'm up getting close to 24 hours awake. That's crazy to me. I... Luckily, I had a little Red Bull right before we started, and I think that's about all that I'm running on right now. I, I may have a hard time getting out of bed tomorrow. We'll have to see. All right, we'll rush off and go home, and uh, hopefully anybody that listened to this disagrees that this was the worst marathon ever, but I stand by it. <laughs> that's right. Thanks for listening, folks. See you later. Good night. Please, sir, that gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. But you're free to steal it. Here, let me to the window a second. Oh. I can smell that swamp on me right now. I feel bad for you. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, jeez. I can. It was that water that's black. Mm. And you're just like, oh, jeez. This came from a septic tank, and I'm in it. <laughs>